Hi students, welcome to Sunil's tutorial. I am Sunil Mirwani and today we will be doing this chapter called as Elasticity. Now in the last lecture we had seen what is modulus of rigidity. Today let's move on ahead. Right? First, let's see what is Poisson's ratio. Right? What do we understand by Poisson's ratio? Poisson's ratio is defined as the ratio of lateral strain to longitudinal strain. Poisson ratio is symbolically written as sigma. Defined as the ratio of lateral strain ratio of lateral strain to longitudinal strain. That is what is Poisson's ratio. What does this mean? Let us assume, right, let's see this. Let us assume that L and B are the length and the diameter of a wire. Are, are length and diameter of a suspended wire. Right? Now let us assume that some weight is attached to the free end of the wire. Now if some weight is attached to the free end of the wire, the wire will undergo elongation due to elasticity. As the wire grows elongation, the diameter of the wire will decrease because the volume remains constant. If I stretch it, obviously the diameter will decrease and if you want to try this experiment, please take a rubber band and stretch it, you will see that it snaps. Why? Because diametrically it goes on reducing. So let, let some free weight, some weight be attached to free end. Let L be elongation and small d be decrease in diameter. In that case, what do we understand by lateral strain? Strain. How do I define strain? Strain, yesterday we had defined as change in dimension upon original dimension. So your lateral strain will be change in diameter upon original diameter. Since it is lateral, I have to consider this horizontally. So lateral strain is going to be D upon D. Next, longitudinal strain, that is in terms of length, the strain. Longitudinal strain is defined as change in length upon original length. Change in length is L upon original length is L. Now, Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio we set as per definition is nothing but the ratio of lateral strain to longitudinal strain. Lateral strain to longitudinal strain. Thus, I can say Poisson's ratio is nothing but D upon D upon L upon L. So this is going to be denominator of denominator becomes numerator. So this is going to be DL upon LD. Right? That is your formula for Poisson's ratio. Now since Poisson's ratio is a number, it is a ratio, that means it is not going to have any dimensions. It does not have any dimensions or units. Since Poisson's ratio is a number, hence it has no units or dimensions. Ok, 
Okay, so that is all about Poisson's ratio. Now let us see the relationship between various ratios. Now let's we know that we have Young's modulus, we have bulk modulus, we have modulus of rigidity and Poisson's ratio. Young's modulus, bulk modulus, modulus of rigidity and Poisson's ratio. Let us find out the relationship between them. There are four equations that give you the relationship between them. First, Young's modulus is twice modulus of rigidity into 1 plus Poisson's ratio. Second, Young's modulus is 9 times bulk modulus into modulus of rigidity upon 3 times bulk modulus plus modulus of rigidity. Right? Then third, Poisson's ratio is three times bulk modulus minus twice modulus of rigidity divided by three into three times bulk modulus plus modulus of rigidity. Right? And the last equation is Young's modulus is three times bulk modulus one minus twice Poisson's ratio. So these are the various equations that give you the relationship between various uh, uh, various modulus of elasticity. Young's modulus, bulk modulus, uh, modulus of rigidity and Poisson's ratio. Fine, do we get this thing here? Yeah. Now we have already learned what is Young's modulus. Young's modulus is longitudinal stress upon longitudinal strain. How do I experimentally find, find out Young's modulus? Experimentally, Young's modulus is found out by a method called as Serrell's method. Let's see the diagram. You have a rigid support, right? You have stand, two stands on which two wires are put right the wires are attached to a frame with the help of a stand this is your stand you have two stands here right the two stands are attached to each other with the help of a rod a movable rod now, you have a support, you have a support, a pivot support on which one end is a pivot support and on the other end you have connected it to a screw gauge. This is your screw gauge on which You, uh, where you have a spirit level placed on it the other end you have a dead weight connected to the other end and you have weight which can be varied here so you have variable weight that can be connected here right this is your experimental setup for finding out Young's modulus. You have, let's label this up guys, you have A, B, C, D. I'll just first label the things up and then I'll explain to you. R, P, S, Q, M and that's it. So that's your diagram for determination of Young's modulus using Serral's method. Right? Serral's method is a method that is used for determination of Young's modulus. Now, it consists of two metal frames P and Q. Two metal frames which are represented with P and Q in the diagram. It consists of two metal frames P and Q and a third metal frame R in such a manner that the relative displacement of frame P and Q can be easily done. Third metal frame R 
is connected in such a manner that we can easily do the relative displacement of metal frame P and Q. Right? A spirit level is placed between the two frames P and Q. Spirit level S is placed between the two metal frames P and Q. In frame P, the spirit level is hinged to a fixed support. This is your fixed support. Okay. And so in frame P, the spirit level is hinged to a fixed support, while in a uh, metal frame Q, it rests on the tip of a micrometer screw watch M. Micrometer screw watch M. Okay, so one end of the spirit level is on a fixed support and the other is on the micrometer screw gauge. Now, AB and CD are two identical wires whose are two identical wires whose Young's modulus has to be determined. They are suspended from a rigid support. So, AB and CD are two identical wires they are suspended from a rigid support to the two metal frames P and Q ok uh, by connecting the free ends of the wire to hook B and C uh, sorry B and D of the metal frames right to the lower end of the metal frame, you have a hanger to which weight can be attached. These are the hangers to which weights can be attached. Okay. Now, a suitable load is connected. Um, a suitable load is suspended from the lower end of wire AB. This is that suitable load that has been suspended from the lower end of wire AB, and uh, from the lower end of a hanger is connected, a hanger with a suitable load is connected to the lower end of wire CD. Wire CD has to hang without any nicks in them. There should not be any knots in them. Right? The initial load suspended from wire CD is called as the zero load. Right? Here we are going to use wire CD for the experimental wire and wire AB as the reference wire. So CD is your experimental wire, AB is your reference wire. The comparison is going to be done between them. Now the initial length and diameter of the wire CD is measured. Initial length and diameter of wire CD is say L and D. Let us assume that initial length and diameter be L and D. Right? Now, the diameter is measured and the length is also measured. Next, a zero load is suspended from the experimental wire CD and the spirit level is made horizontal so that the bubble is exactly in the center. Right? How do I do that? By adjusting the micrometer screw watch. Adjust the screw of the micrometer screw watch till the spirit level is exactly in the center. Right? Now, this particular reading is noted. After this, go on increasing the weight in steps of half kg on frame CD. Right? As I increase the weight here, there will be more elongation of wire CD as a result of which this will stretch. As this stretches, the frame Q will move downwards and the spirit level will get twisted. The bubble will move towards the other end. Right? Adjust the micrometer screw watch again till the spread level comes at the center and note the reading. Do this experiment by increasing the weight by half kg at a time and do it multiple number of times. Right? Now, once you've done this, then you would know the extension of the wire. How would I know the extension of the wire? The length of the wire after the weight is attached minus the original length of the wire, when the zero weight was attached, will give you the extension of the wire. You also know the weight that has been connected to the wire 
let us assume that the mass of the mass is say m mass m is connected to the wire in that case young's modulus can be found out by using the formula mgl upon pi r square l i know the mass i know extension g is 9.8 I know diameter, so hence I can find out the radius. Extension is experimentally found out. Thus, experimentally Young's modulus is found out this way. Fine, do we get this thing clear? So, do we understand Serrell's method for experimental determination of Young's modulus? Now, what are the sources of errors that you can have here? When you are doing this experiment, where all could you commit an error? The support may bend due to the load, right? And the load applied by the wire, this is called as yielding of the support. So as a result, my elongation may not be my actual elongation, but may be due to the bending of the support. Second, the length of the wire may change due to the temperature during the experiment. So in that case again I will not get the proper elongation of the wire. So these are two sources of error that you can have. One, the first error that I can have is yielding of support. The bending of the support on which the wires are connected. Second, temperature. As the temperature changes, the length of the wire will change and your elongation may not be correct. So these are the sources of error in this experiment. Right? Next, let us see the behavior of a wire under increasing load. Of wire under increasing load. Let's explain this to you with the help of a graph. x-axis, y-axis, origin. Let us consider stress on y-axis that is the force applied per unit area and let us consider strain on x-axis that is the change in dimension per unit original dimension. Right? Now, let us see if I go on increasing the load, how will the wire behave? Right? Uh, if I increase the load, initially as the stress increases, strain is going to increase. You will see that initially as the stress increases, strain increases from O to E. Right? E is called as the elastic limit. Now I remember I explained this to you in the last lecture, what is elastic limit? It is that point where the when the restoring force is removed, the body regains its original size and shape. So if a body is stretched up to point E, E is the elastic limit. If the restoring, uh, if the deforming force is removed, the body will come back to its original size and shape. Right? So E is called as elastic limit. Now if force is applied, if stress is applied beyond elastic limit, then the wire, this is how it will behave. Right? You will have a bending like this where there will be more increase in strain for a small increase in stress. Here, there is less increase in stress after the elastic limit. The increase in stress is going to be less whereas the increase in strain is going to be more. So if deforming force is applied beyond the elastic limit, there will be a large change in strain for a small change in stress up to a particular point which is called as the yield point. If the deforming force is applied up till the yield point and after that if the deforming force is removed, the body will now not regain its original shape and size, it will be permanently deformed. The body will then be permanently deformed. If the restoring force is removed, you will say that the body is permanently deformed and it will reach here and not the origin. Right? This happens up to the yield point. Fine, do we get this thing here? So yield point is defined as that point on the stress strain curve 
where the strain begins to increase even if there is not uh, even without any increase in stress after this point of time the body starts to stretch on its own so if force is applied beyond strain you would have the body moving up to up to point n right where n is called as the neck or the constriction the point n on the curve corresponds to the maximum stress that the wire can bear after the yield point also the wire can bear some stress you will see that for a small change in stress now there is a very large increase in strain right at point n the diameter of the wire becomes minimum right it is a point where maximum stress can be bear by the wire right after this if the uh, after this if the deforming force nahi like, if the applied force is increased then the wire breaks this is how the wire behaves under increasing load conditions guys let's go through this once again you have e which is the elastic limit if the applied force is less than the elastic limit and if the force is removed the body regains its original size and shape e is the maximum applied force or e is the maximum stress that can be applied to the wire without permanently deforming the wire if force is applied beyond the elastic limit then for a small increase in stress there is a large increase in strain right and now the body is permanently deformed this goes on up to point y which is the yield point right if the deforming force is removed after the yield point the body will now not regain its original size and shape it is going to be permanently deformed if deforming force is applied after the yield point you will see that there will be a large increase in strain for a very small increase in stress so yield point is that point on the stress strain curve where the strain begins to increase after this point even if there is a very small increase in stress this goes on up till point n n is called as the neck or the constriction right n represents the maximum stress that the wire can bear right it is also called as the breaking stress right at this point the wire becomes extremely weak and the diameter of the wire becomes minimum if even a small stress is applied after the breaking point the wire breaks right this is the behavior of the wire under increasing load condition a very important answer generally asked in the paper right next let us find out the work done in stretching a wire let us find out the work done in stretching a wire now let us consider a wire of length l and cross sectional area a which is uh subjected to gradually increasing load of magnitude f right consider a wire of length l cross sectional area a subjected to increasing load subjected to increasing load of magnitude f right so in that case i can say that my tensile strain or tensile stress first my tensile stress is going to be f upon a stress is force per unit area my tensile strain i hope you all remember guys tensile and longitudinal mean the same thing tensile strain is going to be l upon l strain is a uh, change in dimensions per unit dimension young's modulus is nothing but tensile stress 
upon tensile strain right tensile stress is nothing but f upon a tensile strain is not strain is nothing but l upon l denominator of denominator becomes numerator so this will be fl upon al my young's modulus is going to be this now let us assume that during the extension of the wire the magnitude of force is not constant but increases from 0 to f let force increase from 0 to f let us assume that the force increases from 0 to f right now let at some stage in this process the magnitude of the force be f and let x be the corresponding extension the force is going to increase from 0 to f let at some stage of the experiment F be the force and X be the extension of the wire. The wire is not extending full simultaneously. It is going to extend slowly because the force is increasing slowly. Right? Now, let us assume that dx be a further small extension produced. After this, let us assume that dx is a further small extension produced right now in that case right now in that case work how do I define work work is defined as force into displacement work is defined as force into displacement since my displacement is extremely small the work done will also be small so small work is small force into small displacement fine do we get this thing here now since the displacement was very small the force will also be very small mm -hmm. this is the work done in producing a small displacement right but if this is the work done in producing a small displacement the total displacement will be the sum of all these small displacement hence the total work will be the sum of the work done in producing each of the small displacement every time a small displacement is done so much work is done 1, 2, 3, 4, n number of times it is done so n number of times this work will have to be done hence I can say that let W be the total work done in extending the wire from 0 to L let's assume that if I want to produce an extension of L let's assume that W is the work done so the total work done is the sum of all the small works done so the total work done is the integral of BW guys you all should know by now what is uh, integration integration is nothing but when you add many small things to get one large thing metaphorically that is integration okay now dw we found out dw is f dx dw is nothing but f into dx when the lower limit is 0 and the upper limit is l the wire is stretching from 0 to l right now for this particular set up I can say that stress stress is going to be f upon a and strain is extension upon n so in that case I can say that Young's modulus guys we had already defined Young's modulus as stress upon strain so this will be f upon a divided by x upon l denominator of denominator becomes numerator so this will be fl upon xa right thus i could say that f is equal to yxa yxa upon l right so the small force can be derived as young's modulus extension area divided by the length substitute this value of f in the equation of work 
substitute this value of f in the equation of work therefore i can say that work is 0 to l f f can be written as y x a upon l into dx integration whatever is constant comes outside the integral sign so this is going to be y is constant a is constant l is constant integral of 0 to l x dx integral of x is nothing but you are using the formula integral of x raised to n which is nothing but x raised to n plus 1 upon n plus 1 so here this is going to be y a upon l x square upon 2 or x square upon 2 guys x means x raised to 1 so x raised to 1 plus 1 upon 1 plus 1 when the limits are between 0 to l right definite integrals now let's see this so i can therefore say that work is equal to y a l how do i solve the definite integral it is upper limit minus lower limit substitute the variable by upper limit minus lower limit this two also i'm writing here so in that case this is going to be l square minus zero upper limit minus lower limit fine do we get this thing here so in this case you will get work is equal to y a l square upon 2 n right now this can be written as y a l square can be written as y a l into l i'm just splitting l square into l into l upon upon l into 2 i'm splitting the 2 l as l into 2 but guys look at this f y a l upon l is nothing but f y a that is young's modulus cross sectional area into extension upon original length is nothing but force here the extension is l so the force will be f so this is nothing but f into l by 2 therefore the work done in stretching the wire is half into f into l that is the work done in stretching the wire so thus work done is half load into extension right now once i know this then i can find out the energy stored in this right work is the capacity uh, the energy is the capacity to do work so if work is half f into l that means energy should also be equal to half f into l so i can therefore say that strain energy is half f into l guys energy is the capacity to do work energy is the capacity to do work so uh, energy and work is the same so if work is half f into l that means energy will also be equal to half f into l so that's why i stated that strain energy is half f into l now i can say what is the volume of wire volume of the wire is nothing volume of anything is area into height so volume of the wire will be a into l if this is the volume of the wire what is the strain energy per unit volume the strain energy per unit volume will be nothing but strain energy upon volume so this is going to be nothing but half f into l upon a into l right so the strain energy per unit volume will be half f upon a into l upon l but what is f upon a f upon a is nothing but force per unit area so force per unit area is nothing but stress and l upon l is change in dimension upon original dimension so that is nothing but strain therefore the strain energy per unit volume is half stress into strain that's the other formula that we derive one we derive work is half f into l second strain energy per unit volume is half the product of stress and strain okay so we've got the formula strain energy 
per unit volume is half into stress into strain. But we know that Young's modulus is nothing but stress upon strain. Right? Therefore, I can say that stress is equal to Young's modulus into strain. Right? So in that case, I can substitute this here. So in that case, I can say strain energy per unit volume. Uh, some authors even call this as work done per unit volume. I already told you energy is the capacity to do work. So whether I say energy or work, it is the same thing. So I can therefore say that strain energy per unit volume is equal to half into instead of stress I can write y into strain into strain therefore energy per unit volume is half into Young's modulus into strain square right I could have also substituted it the other way around suppose if I had substituted this way uh, suppose I had I substituted yes had I substituted strain as stress upon y I would have then said that strain energy per unit volume would have been half into stress and instead of strain I could have written this as stress upon y so then in that case this would have been half stress square upon Young's modulus fine we get this in clear so these are the different equations that you can have for strain energy per unit volume I could also say if this is the strain energy per unit volume then I can also say that total strain energy is nothing but strain energy per unit volume into volume strain energy per unit volume into volume Strain energy per unit volume is half stress into strain. Half stress into strain into volume. That is the total energy, total energy that is stored in the wire when the wire is stretched. Right? This finishes the theory of the chapter. We will stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.